Someone left a comment in one of my videos a few weeks ago mentioning that I should write a math book. And I think it's a great idea, but at the same time, there's books like this that exist. And this book is amazing. I really don't see how a person, mainly myself, could improve on a book like this because it's so well written. So this book is called Real Analysis, a long form mathematics textbook, and it's by Jay Cummings. In this video, I wanna show you some of the things that are really interesting about this book. This book is not like other analysis books. When I first got this book, I was a little bit shocked by how big it was. And at first, I don't know if I liked it, but after I opened it up and started flipping through the pages and looking at the book itself, I realized that it's a really good size. So that's something that's very different about this book. Just to give you an example, I have a big calculus book over here. This is Calculus by Earl Swakowski. It's an older edition. And you can see that even though this is a thicker book, this is actually bigger, right? So this distance here and this distance here are larger than this book here. And this is about the size of like Stewart's Calculus or Larson's Calculus. So you're getting a very, very large book. The price of this book is also phenomenal. This is not an expensive book. Most new books that you buy on real analysis are going to cost you a lot more money than this book here. As always, I will leave a link in the description to this book and other books by Jay Cummings, which are just as good. I really like the dedication in the book to my students without whom I would have had to edit this whole damn book myself. Yes, that would be a very, very big task. So one of the things about writing books is it takes a ton of work and time and you need someone else to help you because it's so easy to make mistakes, especially when it comes to typesetting mathematics. If I typeset just a few pages and I don't triple check it, chances are there's gonna be a small error. So I can't imagine how long and how much work it took Jay to write this book. Let's take a close look at the content. It starts with the reels, and then it goes into cardinality, sequences. These are all things that you would study in a real analysis course at the undergrad level series. The topology of R, continuity, differentiation, integration, sequences and series of functions. And there's some appendices. He talks about the construction of the real numbers. And I like this, peculiar and pathological examples. That's a really fun thing that, you know, he put in the book that he really didn't need to. You know, at this point, you know, the book is done, but no, Jay decides to add extra content that is extraordinarily interesting. I think that's awesome. And this is something I really, really like. When I saw this, I was really kind of blown away. List of results. So he actually has a list of the results in the textbook. I'm gonna turn the page so you can see. And it's kind of cool because you can go through and say, oh, that's, that's something I need to know or that's something interesting and you can find it. It's just nice that he's done this. I really, really like it. Yeah, I wish other books would do this. This actually reminds me of some of my personal notes. I have notes that I've made from multiple abstract algebra courses and I have a page where I just have a list of results in abstract algebra and it's a really, really big list. So I'm really happy that someone else in particular, someone else who wrote a book decided to do that and they put it in a book. This is definitely a book that you can buy and read and learn from on your own. Here's where he talks about convergent sequences. So he gives the definition and then he says the following. This is an important definition. This is the first of many weird looking definitions in this textbook. And at this stage, it is really important that you fully understand it. So brew a pot of tea, find a comfortable thinking chair, and ponder it carefully. Don't move on until that pot is emptied. The better you understand it now, the easier the rest of the course will be. Here are a few more comments to help. So he spends a lot of time actually trying to explain. This is completely the opposite of a book like Rudin's Principles of Mathematical Analysis. This is a book for learning, it's a book for students, and Jay Cummings has done an incredible job. I am very, very happy with this book. Here's a beautiful example of Jay Cummings showing that a sequence converges to three. So we have a sequence, a sub n. We have to prove that the limit as n approaches infinity is equal to three. And I like how he breaks up the work for this problem into two parts. You have the scratch work and then you have the proof. 
And the way he does it is pretty much exactly the same way I do in my videos. And I think that's great because I do it that way because I think it's clear, at least to me, and so I hope it's clear to other people. And Jay Cummings does it the same way, which makes this book extra cool in my opinion. Here's an example of some of the exercises. You must prove all of your answers unless stated otherwise. Remember the proof techniques that you learned in your Intro to Proofs class. Direct by contradiction, by using the contrapositive, by induction, and or by cases. And you can disprove something by exhibiting a counterexample. Super clear, super to the point, super awesome. And then he provides hints and solutions to select exercises at his website. So more on that in a second. First, let me just show you how many problems you get in chapter one. So 16, 35, yeah, 35, no, there's more, 37 problems. So you get 37 problems in chapter one. However, I've been to the website and there are some hints and solutions. There's not that many. So I have a couple theories as to why that's the case. People always ask me, why do so many math books not have you know, answers in the back of the book? So I think there's there's two possible reasons, and I'm not saying that this is the reason that he didn't include them. So one, it is a ton of work to actually, you know, go through all of those exercises and write up solutions. I'm thinking of it myself. If I was writing this book, I'd write the whole book. I'd have to come up with all the exercises. And then not only do I have to solve all the exercises, I have to typeset solutions that are 100% correct to all of the exercises. That is an extra amount of work that is huge. Another reason that I think sometimes books don't have solutions, and this is a reason that some people might not like, I don't know, I don't necessarily agree with this reason, it's that these books, math books, are often used in college courses. So people take classes and students are assigned homework problems, and it's always better if you spend a considerable amount of time trying to figure out the problems yourself before looking at the answers. You know, I have a topology book that has all of the answers in it, it has full proofs, but you gain nothing from it if you just jump to the solutions because you're not solving the problems yourself. You're just basically trying to understand the answers, which in itself is meaningful, but it's not the same. It's more important to spend a considerable amount of time working on the problems. And teachers know that, and so a lot of times, a lot of teachers prefer that books don't have solutions. So that could be a reason that this book doesn't have solutions. And also, it's just a ton of extra work. But you get tons of problems in this book, crystal clear explanations. It is written incredibly. Oh, let me show you something here. I just saw something I wanted to remind you of or tell you about. Open questions. So Jay Cummings has done something amazing here. After each exercise set, you have open questions. Basically, these are unsolved problems in mathematics. And they're in this book. So an amazing book that's great to read and you have open questions. Really cool. And he does that for every single chapter after the exercises. He also has that really cool appendix with peculiar and pathological examples. For example, here he discusses the devil's staircase. I really wish a book like this existed when I was first learning analysis. I think it would have made my journey much cleaner. It would have been much easier for me to learn analysis had I had a book like this when I was taking advanced calculus as an undergraduate. I used the book by Fitzpatrick, which is way different from this one, right? Way different, not written in the same tone, much harder to read. And it's considered probably one of the easiest to read analysis books. But this one is actually easier to read. It's actually that good. So I think if you're a student and you're trying to learn analysis on your own for whatever reason, maybe you're doing it for fun, maybe you're going into another field like economics, or maybe you're taking a class or you want to get ready for a class before you take it. There's nothing like preparing ahead of time. You know, if you're like in high school or in college and you're not even at the point yet where you can study this stuff, I still think it's worth trying. And this book is a good choice. It's a big paperback, really, really big, really well made, fantastic. Thank you, Jay Cummings, for bringing this book into existence. And again, I'm getting goosebumps here. This is one of those books that whenever people say to me, hey, you should write a math book, I think about all of the wonderful math books I have. I collect math books, and I have math books written by brilliant mathematicians, and math books written by people you've probably never heard of, and a lot of them are really good, and this is an example 
of one such book. Anyways, I just wanted to show you this video because people always ask about analysis books. This one is super affordable. It's big, it's well-made, very easy to read compared to others. I like it. Oh, before I forget, the number one prereq for this is that you know how to write proof. So definitely learn proof writing before you jump into this. If you're thinking, well, how do I learn to write proofs? Actually, I have it right here, and this was not intentional. Check this out. I have his other book. It's called Proofs, a long-form mathematics textbook. So great book on proof writing. This has its own unique characteristics, and I probably should do a video on this at some point. They're both worth getting, and I'll leave links in the description to both of these. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Good luck.